Hello, I'm Megan and this is Nathan and welcome to Hazel Chat. Today we're going to be interviewing Paul Matson. Sir, Paul, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, I'm the chairman and founder of a charity called Hull for Heroes. I was a soldier many years ago and now I also am a builder who owns a conservatory company. Okay. Um, what got you into these careers? Um, firstly, leaving school, there wasn't much else going on in Hull at the time, so I decided to become a soldier and then went into that career. Once that finished, um, I was lucky enough, in a way, to become a builder and carry on and get my own business. Did you always know you wanted to do this in high school or was it more developed in your life? No, it was more developed. I don't think, um, if I'm honest, probably like most school children, they hadn't really chose the actual career there was going to be and so I had chose many different things but I fell into being a soldier. Okay, so did being in the forces like give you the idea to create Hull for Heroes? No, not at all. Um, unfortunately when I left the forces I had a little bit of a fall down. Um, like many, the transition coming back into civilian life, I, I tripped up, I fell down I, and I ended up homeless. So um, through that, through the help later on in, in my life, I became um, a builder. And if I can tell you the story quickly, as I am a builder, um, a few years ago I got asked to work on a programme called DIY SOS, Hi. which I did do, it was very good. And then we did another programme in Manchester, which was called the Veteran Street. When I was homeless and, and throughout my life, I've always thought that I was the only person that came out the forces and fell down, really. So when I met everybody on DIY SOS in Manchester and spoke to them, the people who were helping, they told me the same story as me, really. So it seems that there was a lot of ex-servicemen that fell down after the forces. So I came back to Hull and set up Hull for Heroes. OK. Um, obviously, we get loads of these people. Like You see all these people on the streets, like the homeless people that have been in the war. How did it make you feel when you it, you had that fall down? Like? Um, um, it's a little bit difficult to explain, but I, I, it, it's a sort of feeling that you don't know what's going on, if you like. It's, it, you just seem to be swept away and swept downwards. And you are stuck in a little bit of a limbo. You've got this thing that is called pride that um, mm. all of us suffer from. But once you've been in the forces, you've, you're sort of forced to have a bigger pride than most people. And I, I was stuck being homeless, destitute, with nothing, and didn't want to ask for help. Uh -huh. So it's a little bit difficult in that situation, and, and that made me fall down even further, unfortunately. So, okay. so um, why is it that um, so many veterans become homeless? Um, transition from the forces, really. Well, the leaving... Most, if you talk to many ex-service men and women, you'll find that their biggest failure in life is, is leaving the forces, their biggest fear as well. So it, you are part of a major team when you're in the forces and you leave the forces on your own. And everything has been done for you during your time in the, in the services. You're cooked for, you, your rooms are all ready yeah. for you. Everything is done for you, basically. And when you come out later life, you have to fill many forms in, you keep getting past all these forms, go there, <laughs> go here, go there. And it basically is, I, don't, I can't, and you can't do it on your own. You, you're left on your own, basically. So, um, I know that, so when you was homeless, what was it that actually allowed you to then step, I don't, step up in a way, like become the builder? Yeah, become back. Basically, yeah. um, Oh, it's a little bit hard to explain, but I, I'd then gone into the drink and drugs scenario, so I, oh, I'd gone right down the hill, become six and a half stone, and was at the end, the end of what I thought was my life. I'd chosen the day that I was a burden, I was done, and that day someone tapped me on the shoulder, and the person was an old auntie of mine, and she said, can I help? And I accepted help. That brought me back straight away. As soon as I've accepted help, I was almost back again, and, and I let forward. Her husband was a builder, so he allowed me to work with him, All right. and that brought me on, and I became a builder myself. So family and friends forward. are a big help when you're a veteran for you? Yeah, well, yeah, but beyond doubt, beyond doubt, yeah. yeah. If you have got family and friends, that is. If once you go in the forces, you have left most of your friends from school and from everywhere, mm. 
20 years on they're they've up and they've gone and done everything they don't really want to know you but you've also left all your friends in the forces as well so yeah. you're back in the city where you don't really know anybody and you've left all your friends so it's a bit stuck and if you haven't got no family certainly if you haven't got a partner a wife or anything a single man stuck on your own you're going to go down the hill and that's what generally happens okay so like going on to the whole hill for heroes and um, like topic if you want to say what type of like charity work is it like a charity kind of thing yeah it like, is a full, full charity we we basically help veterans out of homelessness but we also help in different ways as well we help with housing so um if you've ever watched the program diy sos yeah we will get a house do it up from top to bottom diy sos it basically put everything in there move a veteran in and then look after him afterwards as well. So we won't just move him into a house and say, that's it, it's goodbye. It's look after him in many ways, try and find him work, make sure he's okay each day and come back to him. And, and generally they come then and help us to help someone else, which we don't force them to do that. It's just a natural process that has happened. Okay. Um, with Hull for Heroes, is it just for homeless veterans or veterans struggling with other things such as PTSD or everything, drug problems? Everything, yeah. It's not just for homeless veterans at all. We we deal with everything. So it's just help for any veterans who need it. Yeah, yeah. We we work with every agency um, to help a veteran in every way. Cool. So if someone came up to you um, and asked, like, not like, do you class yourself as being like quite a successful person in what you've done and in a way? Um, in a way, I suppose. Yeah, I'm probably. Um, a little bit too proud to say that I am, if, if you like. But I suppose, in a way, I can say to someone who was down on the look, there is a way out. You can yeah. do it. I did. Look at me. Let's do it together. So, Jen, in in that way, success. Yeah, that I can help someone else. So, um, what like what advice would you give someone in that has been in your situation? Ask for help. Yeah. Stand up. Ask for help come for help straight away. Generally veterans, they are buggers. <laughs> they will wait while the very last second to ask, to ask for help and wait while everything's wrong. Um, if they'd ask for help at the very beginning, we'd be able to help them with lots of things and, and sort their lives yeah. out. Generally they wait while the end, unfortunately, but that's pride and that's, we've all got pride and it's just, just the way it is, but just ask for help. Okay, so we, I think we've, we're running out of time now, so is there anything that you think, obviously, I know you said ask for help, but is there anything else that you think will be good advice for people like to give out there and give that people that boost? Um, just be there for people. That is, generally in life, lots of people run off and do their own things and they carry on with all their own worlds. If, if lots of people turned around and looked at different people and looked at the friends and said, you bit down, pal. Do you know what I mean? Let's okay. look after each other. It's one of the biggest things in life and, and make sure nobody's lonely. Make sure the friends around you and the old people in Downey Street are lonely and, and stuff and, and try and do things for people. Look after each other. OK. Yeah, I think there's a final question for me. Um, so many people talk about how you could help homeless people, but a lot of them weren't homeless. As someone who was homeless, what do you think is the best way for the public to help homeless people? Well, um, there are many homeless people on the streets of Hull, um, but there are many people who are living in hostels who then during the course of the day go out begging. And generally, they're, they're begging for money to be able to buy them drugs. So don't ever give a homeless person money because you may as well put the drugs in their body for them or the drink, whichever it might be. Offer them something to eat. Maybe if you've got a blanket at home, take that to the city centre and offer them a blanket, but never offer them money. Just always offer them something to eat or, or a hot drink. Yeah. OK. Thanks for listening. This was Hazel Chat with Megan and Nathan and our guest was Paul Matson. Thank you.